Okay, so my long-term viewers will know that I've never made a video like this before, but honestly, I've always wanted to because I've been a massive MMA fan for years now, and since these days, I'm just kind of doing whatever I want with the channel. This seemed like the perfect timing. So today, I'm going to be giving you guys my personal picks for what is going to be the most stacked UFC card of all time. I'm talking about UFC 300. This card is absolutely insane. I mean, if you go down the list, there are at least three fights that could headline a regular pay-per-view event, right? We got the main event in Pereira versus Hill, which I know is not exactly what people were hoping for in terms of uh, star power. You know, it's not Connor, it's not Brock Lesnar or whatever people were expecting, but it is still a super interesting fight with two very exciting fighters. So I'm definitely still looking forward to that. And then we have the women's strawweight title between Zhang Weili and Yan Xiaonan. And Wei Li is basically only in fun fights. I mean, just look at the Johanna fights, right? And by the way, she is by far my favorite female fighter. So I might be a little bit biased here. Uh, but for Yan, I mean, she had that super surprising finish against the Andrade recently, right? I don't think anybody was expecting that. But there's also the China versus China aspect, which automatically intrigues me as a Chinese man, right? So that's gonna be good. And uh, then we have the BMF title fight between Justin Gaethje and Max Holloway. And there's just no way this fight is not gonna be a banger. Now, looking at the rest of the card, I feel like every other fight could at least headline a fight night card. You got Charles Oliveira versus Armand Sarukian, uh, Bo Nickel versus Cody Brundage, Yuri Prohashka versus Alexander Rakic, um, Calvin Cater versus Aljamain Sterling, Holly Holm versus the debuting Kayla Harrison, uh, Sadiq Yusuf versus Diego Lopez, Jalen Turner versus is it Hanato? I think it's Hanato Moicano. Uh, Jessica Andrade versus Marina Rodriguez. Uh, Bobby Green versus Jim Miller. And Davison Figueredo versus Cody Carbrandt is opening the prelims of this event. I think that alone should tell you just how stacked this card is overall because you got two former UFC champions opening the prelims. So yeah, I don't think anyone can argue that this is not the most stacked card of all time, just based on how many top 10, top 15 fighters you have on it, but also how many former title holders, how many former interim or undisputed champions you have. I think in total, it's uh, 12, 12 former interim or undisputed champions in the UFC on this one card. It's uh, the biggest UFC event since I mean, since Conor versus Habib, right? And it's gonna be really interesting to see how many pay-per-view buys this one does, because I think Conor and Habib did 2.3, 2.4 million. I don't think this one is gonna do quite as well. It's probably not gonna reach the same heights just because the main event is missing some star power, right? I mean, of course, Pereira is a big star, don't get me wrong, but he's nowhere close to what Connor or Habib were at their peaks. So yeah, 2.4 million buys, unlikely, but it's gotta be at least one to 1.5 million, right? Like the card is just so damn deep. Now, a quick disclaimer before we get started, even though I'm a huge MMA fan, I'm still pretty casual in terms of the intricacies of the sport. If you're looking for a high level technical breakdown of every fight, then this is not the place to be. I tend to pick a lot with my heart and I ride with my favorite fighters. So that's exactly what we're gonna do in this video. If that's cool with you, then keep watching. Of course, we're starting with the main event, which is the light heavyweight title match between the champ, Alex Poetan Pereira and Jamal Sweet Dreams Hill. Now, according to the betting odds, which I believe are from DraftKings, I'm not sure actually, but on Topology, they have Pereira as a minus 150 favorite, 
and Hill is a plus 125 underdog. This is a very closely aligned fight. Uh, Pereira is only a slight favorite, and Hill is a slight underdog. And I think this makes sense just because Pereira is the current champion. He's fought more recently, and there are a lot of question marks about Hill, and specifically how he's gonna look after a uh, pretty catastrophic injury, right? The Achilles tear. Like I said, I think they're both super exciting fighters, and I really enjoy watching them fight. They both have dynamite in their hands and can easily put each other's lights out if they find the right shot. Um, one big question mark, once again, for Jamal is what is he gonna look like coming off of injury? Because the last time he fought, which was uh, well over a year ago, he was dominant against Glover when he won the title. So if that same Jamal Hill shows up on Saturday, I think he's definitely gonna give the champ some problems. And for Pereira, he is as high level of a striker as you can possibly get. The only question for him is his chin because Jamal hits really hard. I mean, just refer to that uh, Walker fight where he turned the guy into one of those wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube men, right? And if Jamal cracks him, is he gonna be able to take it? Because I just can't get that image of Izzy sending him into the Shadow Realm out of my head, right? So I do have some questions about Pereira's chin, especially since you would imagine that Jamal punches quite a bit harder than Izzy does. In terms of height and reach, they're essentially identical. Pereira is one centimeter taller and has a one inch reach advantage, which is not nothing, but he won't have the same advantages that he's used to in that department. One thing I noticed on Jamal's Instagram bio is that he's already counting this fight as a win. It says, 13 and one, undisputed UFC light heavyweight champion of the world. And if you check his record, it's currently 12 and one. So he's basically manifesting this win before it happens. Obviously it puts a lot of pressure on him to actually win because it'd be a little bit embarrassing to have to change your bio after, but in case you forgot, the last person to do this was Ilya Taporia, who won his title shot in dominant fashion against Alexander Volkanovsky, right? So uh, I think that's an encouraging sign. Some people might not realize that Jamal is actually quite a bit younger than Pereira at 32 versus 36 for Pereira. And even though that's not old, um, especially for this weight class, I feel like that four year age gap should offer some kind of advantage for Jamal. According to Topology, only 29% of people are picking Jamal to win, despite the very close betting lines. And I think there is some recency bias in there, just because we haven't seen Jamal in so long. But I get it, I get it, because Pereira is a very scary dude. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if he knocks out Jamal in the first round, even in the first minute, anything is possible, right? But guess what? I'm siding with the minority here for my pick, and I'm picking Jamal Hill to reclaim his 205 title via third round knockout. Next up is the co-main event, which is the women's strawweight title fight between Zhang Weili and Yan Xiaonan. Uh, currently, Wei Li is a pretty substantial favorite at minus 420, and Nan is the underdog at plus 320. Now, this is a really important fight for me, personally, as a Chinese person. It's China versus China. Well, I guess the good thing is, no matter who wins this fight, uh, there's still gonna be a Chinese champion in the UFC, and hopefully, my boy Song Yadong gets there someday as well. Obviously, I'm picking Wei Li, not just because she's a big favorite, but also because, like I said, she's my favorite female fighter. It's been that way since she's entered the UFC, and there's just no reason for me to stop supporting her here. I'll be honest, those two losses to Rose were, were tough. They were really tough, but outside of that, she's basically looked unbeatable in all of her other fights. Both fighters are essentially the same size. Jan is one inch taller, but I don't think that's gonna make a big difference. Uh, what will make a huge difference is 
Wei Li's strength, her power, and her overall athleticism. I just don't think that Yan can, can match that. Yan did surprise me in that Andrade fight when she knocked her out, but I'd be very surprised if she's able to find a similar shot against Zhang. And, you know, 96% of people are picking Zhang to win here on Topology, which is more one-sided than I was expecting. Like, I did think a lot of people would pick Zhang, but I didn't think it would be 96%. But of course, I'm siding with the majority this time. And I'm gonna say Zhang by fourth round submission. Possibly a situation where she wobbles Yan on the feet and then finishes her off on the ground via some kind of choke. Next up is the last title fight of the night between uh, Justin Gaethje and Max Blessed Holloway for the BMF title. Uh, Gaethje is currently the minus 210 favorite compared to Holloway, who is a plus 175 underdog. I'm a little shocked that Max is this big of a dog. I mean, plus 175 isn't crazy, but I just thought it would be a closer line fight given the fact that it's it's Max Holloway, right? And Gaethje is bigger, I guess. Um, it's his natural weight class versus Max who's moving up, so I guess that probably accounts for most of the uh, line there. But I mean, I feel like if you were a betting man, there's some good value on uh, Holloway at this price point. Maybe, I don't know, gambling's bad. Okay, so <laughs> uh, like I said, Max is moving up to 155 for this fight. Um, and the record for fighters moving up weight classes isn't spectacular, but Max has always been pretty big for a 145er and 155 seems like maybe it's actually closer to his natural weight class. Um, I love Gaethje too though. Gaethje, I think, is currently the most exciting fighter in the UFC. All of his fights are must watch and I never want to bet against him or never want to pick against him, even though I did in his last two fights <laughs> against Poirier and Fiziv. And that didn't exactly work out for me. Um, Gaethje pretty clearly has the power advantage here. And, um, should be the better wrestler, even though I don't see him actually using it, like ever. Uh, Max might have the speed advantage though, and he's such a technical striker, so if he can avoid taking a really hard shot and getting his lights put out, then I could see him outpointing Gaethje just with his crazy volume. So since I got burned the last two times I picked against Gaethje, I'm gonna do it again. And I'm saying max by split decision because even if he puts on a clinic, I feel like one of these judges is gonna F it up. Now for the remaining fights, I'm gonna give some very quick picks just because I don't want this video to be an hour long. So next we have Charles Oliveira versus Armand Sarukian, which is also gonna be a banger. Uh, Oliveira is plus 185. That's kind of crazy. Uh, minus 225 for Armand Sarukian. Of course, Charles is always dangerous, but Armand is an absolute beast. That dude is a unit. So even though I love Charles and he's always liable for a submission out of nowhere, um, Armand is super young at 27. Charles is getting up there. He's not old per se, but there's a pretty substantial age gap. And one interesting thing that I see here is that 65% of people are picking Oliveira to win, even though he is a sizable underdog here. Um, honestly, I have no confidence in this pick, but I'm gonna say, hmm, Sarukian by second round knockout. I just think it's his time. I think he's gonna get that uh, title fight with uh, Islam and possibly take it this time. We got Bo Nickel versus Cody Brundage. Uh, Bo is a minus 2,500 favorite, and Cody is plus 1,200. Um, this is the first fight on the main card, and a lot of people were complaining that it didn't deserve to be here just because Bo hadn't 
you know, been in the UFC for long enough. He didn't earn this spot, which I get. I can kind of agree with, but the people that are getting mad at Bo for being placed here are just stupid because it's not his decision, right? And clearly the UFC wants to make this guy a star. This is a showcase fight for him. He's supposed to dominate and if he loses, it'll be, I think, the biggest upset in UFC history, at least based on the betting lines. So yeah, I'm not going to pick that. <laughs> I don't think he's going to lose. And uh, give me Bo Nickel by first round submission. Next, we got a pretty huge light heavyweight match between Yuri Prohashka and Alexander Rakic. And this is probably to determine the next number one contender. Uh, basically, the guy who's going to fight the winner of the main event. And surprisingly, uh, Yuri is a plus 110 underdog and Rakic is minus 130. Obviously, very closely lined fight again. Uh, basically a pick em. But I would have thought that Yuri would be a favorite in this fight. Like, not a big favorite, maybe minus 150 or something in that range. But no, he's plus 110. Uh, don't get me wrong, I know Rakic is super skilled. And who knows what would have happened in that Jan fight if he hadn't injured his knee. But with that said, he is coming off injury. We don't know exactly what he's gonna look like. And we all know that Yuri is a monster. So I think with all that information, I have to pick Yuri, but it's gonna be a tough fight. And I'm picking Yuri Prohashka by unanimous decision. Calvin Cater versus Aljamain Sterling. Uh, Cater is plus 120, Aljamain is the favorite at minus 140. Another super closely lined fight. So uh, yeah, Sterling is the slight favorite here which um, I think is just based on his championship pedigree, as they say. Uh, his striking, though, has always been suspect, and Cater is a great striker. And Cater's also quite a bit taller than Sterling. I think he's uh, four inches taller. Sterling's moving up in weight for, I'm not sure if he's fought in this weight class before, but at the very least, it's been a while if he has, right? Um, so that's gonna be different. And uh, honestly, I don't really have a side in this one. Like, I don't really have a dog in the race. But if I had to pick, I would say, yeah, my heart says Cater by unanimous decision. So I'm gonna go with that. Holly Holm versus Kayla Harrison. Holly is plus 340 and Kayla is minus 480. So a pretty substantial uh, favorite. This is the UFC debut of Kayla Harrison against a 42-year-old Holly Holm. Uh, I really respect everything that Holly has achieved in her career and the fact that she's still fighting at this point in her life, but I just think she's going to be overwhelmed by Kayla's size and strength. I mean, have you seen the guns on this lady? She is an absolute tank. I definitely wouldn't mess with her. I am admittedly a bit concerned about the weight cut for Kayla because she usually fights at a higher weight class. So assuming all that goes well, she should dominate this fight. So give me Kay Harrison by second round submission. Let's talk about Sadiq Yusuf versus Diego Lopez. Another very close fight, betting wise. Uh, plus 115 for Yusuf the underdog and minus 140 for Lopez the favorite. Uh, not too sure about this one. I mean, Yusuf looked great early in his last fight against Barboza and then just kind of choked it away. Lopez has looked amazing ever since entering the UFC. Even in that loss to Evloev, he was extremely impressive and he seems like a really nice guy, uh, very down to earth. And oh, we also basically share the same birthday. <laughs> He's like a month older than me, so. I gotta take Lopez uh, by, let's say, third round TKO. Jalen Turner versus Hanato Moicano. Uh, Turner is the minus 225 favorite. Moicano is plus 185 underdog. I love both fighters here. Um, I think this will be a very fun fight for as long as it lasts, which is, I don't think gonna be very long. Uh, Moicano has done a great job of becoming a fan favorite recently. Uh, in his last couple of matches. I love the whole Waikano wants money thing and I want the best for him. But I just think that 
he won't be able to deal with the sheer uh, length and size and power of Jalen. So give me Jalen Turner by first round knockout. Jessica Andrade versus Marina Rodriguez. And this is a pick'em. This is a minus 110 either way fight. So basically same odds for both fighters. Uh, Andrade was on a rough three fight losing streak before her last win over Mackenzie Dern. So I think that has kind of contributed to some people underestimating her now. But keep in mind, the three women she lost to are all top title contenders in Suarez, Jan, and Blanchfield. So I still have a lot of confidence in her. I don't think she's done by any means. And uh, I think she's gonna get it done on Saturday. So I'm picking her to win by unanimous decision. Second last fight of the night is Bobby Green versus Jim Miller. Bobby is minus 190, uh, Jim is plus 160 as the underdog. Um, this is tough because my mind logically says Bobby, but my heart says Jim. Jim has always said he wants to fight long enough to compete in UFC 300. And now that he's here, I feel like it'd be the perfect storybook ending to his career to get a win at UFC 300 and then possibly retire. It's up to him, obviously, but it'd be a pretty cool story, right? So, oh, I don't really know, because I feel like Bobby is better at this point, but Jim is still pretty good. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go with my heart. I'm gonna go with my heart and say Jim Miller by second round knockout. Oh, I just realized I said second last fight of the night when I should have said second fight of the night because we're going in reverse order. So now we're going to talk about the first fight of the night, which is still insane to me. Two former champions, Davison Figueredo versus Cody Garbrandt. Uh, Davison is a pretty decent favorite at minus 300 and Cody is the underdog at plus 240. Um, one thing I noticed is Figgy is actually quite old for the weight class. I think he's 36 and, uh, you know, at the lighter weight classes, you tend to age faster, right? You tend to, um, I don't want to say like get washed, but you tend to lose the things that make you great faster than the heavier weight classes. So yeah, Figgy being as old as he is, is a little bit problematic, but he did look good in his fight against Rob Font. Uh, recently, so I guess you can't really say he's getting old yet. And uh, at the same time, I don't know if Cody can handle his power. Um, I don't really know what he has left in the tank. I mean, he has a few wins recently, but it's not against like super high competition. And I mean, Figueredo is still a former champ and not that long ago, right? So uh, I'm gonna go with my gut and say Figueredo by third round TKO. And that's gonna do it for my UFC 300 predictions. We just went through all, uh, I think 13 of the uh, main card and prelims of this event. Um, hopefully I get at least half of these predictions right. I'd be pretty happy about that. Well, I guess I would have to go either over or under half the fights correct since there's an odd number of fights. So hopefully I get at least seven of these predictions correct. And uh, that's gonna do it guys. Uh, thank you for watching this really random but fun UFC prediction video. I might do more if this one does okay. I'm not expecting it to really get views, but those of you that are watching are probably big MMA fans and uh, I might do more just for you guys and for myself as well, of course. Uh, but yeah, enjoy the event. Uh, have a great time. Let me know in the comments what your predictions are before the event starts for at least the main card. Oh, and also tell me who your favorite fighter, your favorite MMA fighter is. Uh, it doesn't have to be just UFC, it could be PFL, one championship, um, some other random promotion, up to you. I think my favorite non-UFC fighter has to be Mighty Mouse, Demetrius Johnson, because not only is he one of the goats, but he's also a dope person as well. So 
that's gonna do it for the video, guys. Uh, once again, thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you for the support. As always, if you liked today's video, then make sure to like the damn video. Sub to the channel if you're new, hit that notification bell so that YouTube knows you wanna stay up to date with all my latest content. And until next time, have an awesome, awesome day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media. Signing out.